I am Toymaker ZW and I received a request from a Mr. Ludwig to create little figurines of characters from a 90s show called uh, Smiling Creatures. They were made by a company called Playtime Co. and apparently there were a total of 8 animals at first, but one of them got recalled. He said, Do not make the cat! And also requested their poses to be exactly like the ones on their cardboard cutout. Which is really frustrating because it's so hard to recreate something in 3D with just a 2D flat reference. But for some reason, some guy called Randall Som on Cult 3D already made them and they look amazing, so I'm just gonna buy them. Which means I am going to need a 3D printer to print this, and I will be using the Frozen Mighty 8K this time. Let's prep the models for printing. The original models are quite big, they are like 15cm tall and almost as tall as our green aliens. So I decided to half their sizes so that I can fit them all on the Mighty 8K build plate. And since I've got the 3D model and I've got some space left, I'm just gonna print a cat anyway, like what's the worst that could happen? So obviously you can't just print them like that because they need support and you can add support automatically right away but I like to hollow my prints to save on resin. Like look at this, the light grey areas are money that you are saving and by adding holes in these areas, it will help you clean the insides of the prints easier. Okay, I know what you're thinking, it's ugly. But it's okay because I don't care about the back. But of course you can always choose to cover it up with some UV putty. Here's a closer look at the difference between a hollowed and non-hollowed print. Layer by layer, you can see that you are saving a lot of resin on the inside. But the outsides, they look exactly the same. So there's really no reason why you shouldn't hollow. You just have to place support in and on all the prints and squeeze all of them in the same build plate. And we are ready to print. Then put the models into G2 box and make sure nothing important is exceeding the build plate, like this support which I went back to remove, and then we can slice the file and get to printing. Now I don't really understand why this Mr. Ludwig chose me to print this for him, because literally anyone with a printer could print this with the models, and after just 11 hours, all of them are ready. As you can see, there were some issues with the printing at the base, but the printer still managed to print the entire thing out nicely in the end, which is amazing, because the Mighty 8K is just so reliable and consistent. And to ease the washing process, I'll be separating them into pieces and dumping them into the wash Mega S for a quick dip and flush out any soles or internal organs with a squeeze bottle, dump them into another container of alcohol and repeat the process for all of them to make sure that they are clean and not haunted. The last step to printing would be to cure them again in the Cure Mega S for 15 minutes and we are ready for our favourite part, sanding. Wow, they look really really good. The details are so nicely done and the floor tiles on the base, nice. So I've been doing some research about these characters and this is called Crafty Corn, an artist who is unhappy that we are hogging all the paints. Can you give me some red? You are hiding more red from me. I know you are. Give it here! We have Dog Day here who doesn't want us to be here. Dog Day says, Fetch! You can't be here. You can't stay. We have Kickin' Chicken who has never been outside before. I've never been outside before. Here, follow me. I'll step out first. And for Picky Piggy, who's clearly not picky at all because she eats everyone, I mean everything. Field Elephant? Yum! Played Unicorn? We have to be careful about tail because it's as thin as the support and we don't want to accidentally cut it off. And this is Hoppy Hopscotch, who is a little obsessed with jumping. Jump! Jump! Bobby Bearhawk is also a little obsessed but this time with us. I'm crazy about you. I'm lost without you. Then Boba Boba Fend is just a little creep. Want to know what I remember about you? <laughs> and lastly, I couldn't find any voices for Catnap, but he's also one that we need to be careful with because he has a really long tail. I wonder why it's so long. Once the supports are off, I did a quick test feed and it turns out that the base works for Dog Day, Hopscotch and Bear Hug, but the other squares are just too big for the rest of the feet, so I had to cut them off. And maybe I will glue them on after painting? 
Now we can start sanding and it's really important because it helps remove any flaws on your print and make them really smooth so that your paint will lay on perfectly. And one thing I love about sanding is... Wait, huh? What happened? It's all sanded and primed? Wow, I must love sanding so much, I passed out! Anyway, once it's primed, you can tell the flaws even clearer, like the holes on the print, so we have to fill them up with UV clay. And here's also when you can start filling some of the holes that we made digitally previously. And for me, I will only be filling those that are obvious, like the ears and the hands. Then we put them back to cure and we can send them again, which I love so much. But I love our supporters more because you are the reason why I can continue making videos on YouTube. So thank you guys so much for your support on YouTube, Coffee, and Patreon. And we can finally paint. When mass painting small figurines like these, I like to do some planning first so that I don't go crazy halfway through. And this time I will be mostly airbrushing so that I can get a smooth finish. For this, what I want to do is to get the white done first, then the blacks, and whatever colors the feet and palms are, and then finally the rest of the body. Since we already sprayed white primer, we can go straight to masking the eyes with some blue tag. I simply used a toothpick to make sure all the whites are covered up, because the next step will be to spray them with black paint to cover both the eyes and their big white mouth. I also like to protect the paints with clear coat to prevent them from peeling off, and once that is done, we shall mask the black areas. At first, I was considering using tape, but I found it so hard to cut the tape off without cutting the print itself. So I went back to the primitive method of using blue tag for both the eyes and the mouth. And then I sprayed another coat of white primer to reset the canvas. Then I'm going to deal with the yellows. Because yellows are notoriously hard to hand brush. And most of their little symbols in front are yellow. So I'm going to get those done first. Then tape them up and we can deal with their individual colors. Like light orange for chicken, dark orange for dog, beige for bear, hot pink for pig, light blue for unicorn, dark blue for elephant, dark green for hobby, and dark purple for catnap. Now it's round 2 of masking, which can be achieved mostly with a straight tape because their limbs are quite straightforward. The only tedious one is the unicorn because she has a lot of blue parts like her fluffy hair and tail, but once those are masked, we can paint their body colours like white for unicorn, yellow for chicken, light orange for dog, red for bear, light pink for pig, light green for hobby, light blue for boba fern, and purple for catnap. And finally, we can remove the masking, but let's not forget to paint the tongue as we go, and remove all the blue tag to reveal all the lovely colours and also our bad masking job, because clearly, the eyes will need some touching up. I also accidentally forgot to mask Dog Day's tail, but don't worry, we can always repaint it with a brush. After a quick touch up on the eyes, and also painting all the eyebrows, nose and accessories, it's time to deal with the base. At this point in time, I was so sick of painting, I decided to just use some tape that I bought for Bo Peep's ship, and just tape over the base with their respective colours. It just so happens I have 8 colours for all 8 bases, and all we had to do was paste cut, magic, assemble, and we are done. Here we have the smiling creatures, mirror figurines that are 3D printed and painted, and the designs are amazing. The story and the lore behind these characters are so fascinating. I really hope you guys enjoyed watching this video because I am hoping to recreate some of the Poppy Playtime toys in real life with their boxes and everything. So please subscribe and I will see you next time.